boxing community has reacted to the electrifying showdown between Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia. On the other hand, David Benavidez has ignited a storm by openly mocking his former foe, Canelo Alvarez, and boldly predicting Jaime Munguia's triumph. While some perceive Benavidez's remarks as bitter, he stands firm in his resolve to serve Canelo a taste of the bitterness he endured from being denied a fight for years. Benavidez didn't hold back, criticizing Canelo's training regimen and warning that he'd be in for a rough time if he stepped into the ring unprepared. In the ongoing saga between Benavidez and Canelo Alvarez, it's transformed into a case of, if you can't spar him, spoof him. It's hard to fault David Benavidez for his mounting frustration after years of hoping for a showdown with Canelo that still hasn't materialized despite endless speculation. Now his sights are set on Canelo Alvarez as he faced Jaime Munguia. The undercard promised a slew of captivating matchups. Canelo's defeat to Dimitri Bivol in his leap to vie for the light heavyweight title in 2022 remains a point of contention. Despite triumphing in all three subsequent fights via unanimous decisions, critics argue that he should have secured at least one knockout victory against the likes of Gennady Golovkin, John Ryder, or Jermel Charlo. Alvarez fought undefeated compatriot Mungia, who has demonstrated his ability to challenge the undisputed super middleweight champion. Mungia achieved what Canelo couldn't by knocking out Ryder earlier in January. With 64 fights under his belt, Canelo boasts an impressive record of 60 wins, two losses, and two draws. On the other hand, Jamie Munguia, the 27-year-old Mexican fighter, enters the ring with 43 victories out of 43 fights, gearing up for what promises to be the most significant bout of his career. The competition served as a pivotal moment in determining if Canelo remains the dominant force at 168 pounds, with contenders like Munguia, David Benavidez, and David Morrell on the rise, many speculate that it may be time for a new champion to emerge. Nevertheless, Alvarez's customary Cinco de Mayo appearance offers him the ideal chance to quell any uncertainties surrounding his reign. Interestingly, the Cinco de Mayo undercard, featuring four title bouts, lacks notable Mexican representation, a fact worth noting amidst the anticipation for this event. Saul Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia geared up to battle it out for a slew of prestigious titles. The World Boxing Council, World Boxing Organization, World Boxing Association, and International Super Middleweight World Titles. Alongside this headline clash, there's an electrifying undercard featuring Brandon Figueroa taking on Jesse Magdaleno for the World Boxing Council Interim Featherweight World Title. Adding to the excitement, Mario Barros and Fabian Andres Maidana are set to face off for the World Boxing Council interim welterweight world title. And let's not forget the showdown between Imon Stanionis and Gabriel Maestra in a World Boxing Association welterweight match. There was also buzz about 17-year-old rising star Kermel Moten joining the bill. But unfortunately, that won't be happening. Nonetheless, this colossal event is still slated to take place on May 4th at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. As Canelo Alvarez geared up for his upcoming fight, he's been dedicating himself to rigorous training sessions, determined to evade what could potentially mark the third setback in his career. The stakes couldn't be higher, with the looming threat of relinquishing all his championship belts, possibly signaling the end of his era of unparalleled supremacy in the boxing world. It's a moment that could symbolize the passing of the torch, bidding farewell to an illustrious reign. Despite being questioned about his relentless pursuit of boxing glory in the face of numerous battles and triumphs, Canelo remains resolute, citing his unwavering love for the sport as his driving force. He expressed his passion for boxing, acknowledging its genuine hold on him, yet, amidst this affection, Many fervent supporters of Canelo hope he won't exit the ring after a crushing defeat, but rather choose to retire as a dignified champion. The verdict of the events unfolding on May 4th will significantly shape Canelo Alvarez's trajectory. However, David Benavidez has stirred some playful banter about Alvarez's training regimen. Doubting his methods and foreseeing defeat if he steps into the ring with such a lackluster performance 
Benavidez was captured on camera chuckling at Alvarez's training. He's doing this, and Munguia feasts all night, he remarked. He added, I understand why he's avoiding me. He'll only continue to evade if he keeps up this training regimen. Fans haven't been too pleased with David Benavidez, feeling he's unjustly critical without cause. Benavidez cautioned Munguia to approach the bout with caution, emphasizing the need to evade Alvarez's onslaught. Munguia must maintain distance, he advised. He added, Engaging in close quarters plays to Canelo's strengths. His affinity for body shots is well known. Munguia's strategy should center on peppering combinations and swiftly retreating. Benavidez highlighted the potential impact of Munguia's defensive prowess on Alvarez's performance, lauding the raw power evident in Munguia's punches. Interestingly, David Benavidez seems to have come to terms with the reality of not landing a showdown with Saul Canelo Alvarez. Instead, he has embraced the upcoming fight between Canelo Alvarez and Jamie Munguia, despite his persistent efforts to establish himself as a serious challenger to the Mexican champion. Canelo's stance appears steadfast to Benavidez's detriment. Consequently, in recent weeks, the Arizona native has redirected his focus toward fresh challenges in the light heavyweight division. He has confirmed his next bout at 175 pounds against Ukrainian Alexander Volkanovsky, slated for June. Despite being named the WBC super middleweight mandatory challenger last year, a position that ultimately enabled Canelo to avoid facing Benavidez without jeopardizing his title, Benavidez has struggled to secure a match against the renowned champion. This situation has prompted him to explore alternative avenues. Negotiations for a bout with Canelo were further complicated by Benavidez's demand for a staggering $150 million purse. Alvarez doesn't believe there's any advantage in imposing weight stipulations on Benavidez. He views a rehydration clause as a situation where nobody wins. After the fight, they'll just blame it on that clause. Alvarez explained in an interview from his training camp home near Lake Tahoe, California. And then what? They'll keep talking about the clause instead of focusing on the actual fight. When I beat him, they'll say it was because of the clause, not because of the fight itself. Just as Ryan Garcia attributed his knockout by Gervonta Davis to the 136 pounds catchweight and 10 pounds rehydration clause, Alvarez anticipates a similar explanation if he prevails against Benavidez. Alvarez is familiar with weight clauses in significant fights, as seen when he, still relatively inexperienced, faced Floyd Mayweather Jr. and suffered his first career loss. In 2013, Alvarez held the titles of the World Boxing Council and World Boxing Association 154-pound champion. However, for his bout against Mayweather, he had to fight at a catchweight of 152 pounds. Mayweather imposed this clause, initially proposing weights of 147 and 150 pounds, before settling on 152 pounds. On the night of the fight, Alvarez weighed 165 pounds, while Mayweather weighed in at 150 pounds and fought at that weight. Alvarez suffered his first loss that night, which is why he's not inclined to agree to such a clause again. David Benavidez believes he understands why Canelo Alvarez has been avoiding him. Last month, it came to light that Benavidez would step up in weight class to challenge Alexander Volkanovsky for the interim WBC title at 175 pounds. This decision followed his inability to secure a bout against Canelo, the reigning 168 pounds champion. Speaking to the media during the Jorge Masvidal Nate Diaz press conference in Miami, Benavidez disclosed his reasoning behind moving up in weight. I'm not sure what Canelo's intentions are. I was the top contender for a title shot, waiting for three years. Since he didn't offer me the opportunity, I decided to make the move. Waiting became tiresome. The intrigue and verbal sparring surrounding a potential bout between Canelo and Benavidez began when Canelo inadvertently brought up the meeting between his conqueror and WBA light heavyweight champion, Dimitri Bivol, and Gilberto Zurdo Ramirez. Most recently, he took on Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. in a high-spending grudge match in 2017. This was one of just three Mexican opponents he's faced since winning his first world title against Matthew Hatton in March 2011. 
His victory over Alfonso Gomez in the second defense of the World Boxing Council super welterweight belt marked the only all-Mexican bout involving Canelo for a world title until his match against Alfredo Angelo immediately after his loss to Floyd Mayweather Jr. In both the Chavez showdown and the recent non-title fights, it's not only Benavidez the boxer pushing Canelo to reconsider his path, but also his father who's joining the fray. Benavidez Sr. hasn't shied away from criticizing Canelo, notably during the lead-up to his son's bout with Plant. So, that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned and we will catch you in the next video.